All right, hello. This is me, Throne Spear. I'm just uh, here to give you guys, bring you guys a t tutorial on how to make your first world. If you've, uh, if you've seen my other tutorial on how to set up your own skins, you'd know exactly. You know, you've already set up the entire tools and maps. I guess I'll just make a tutorial on this later, but I'll, I'll provide a, I'll provide a link to those who just don't mind reading. Uh, in the description. Should be pretty easy to find. Okay, just waiting for this to set up. I've had to do this tutorial over twice now because uh Cam Studio couldn't find it before. Just it just couldn't render the three D um images all sorry that uh D edit is using. But right now, um this debut video capture thing seems to be working pretty good, so I'm just gonna stick with that. As we're waiting for the edit to load up, um, yeah, here we go. I forget it. I was just gonna ramble on about something stupid. We're first gonna go down to File, New World. Please enter name for the new world. Let's just go First World. Enter the names for this world. No world selected. Use prefabs. Why not? Okay. First off, what I'm going to go through is the four views that you're going to see once the de-edit world loads up. This right here is your perspective view. You can move around in it using the O button on your keyboard, which will make you look around in a 360 degree view. The I tool is used to move front. The uh, I button you can use to use um, your, your camera display to go forward, backwards, left, and right. You can also hit I, right click, and you can go up and down, which is good for just, I don't know, m moving around at, at, at an easier space. O can also be used to just fly around if you're bored or whatever, and you're just, I, I, I don't know, I, I do it sometimes when I'm spacing out. And just pretty much navigating through the world. And it's, it's pretty easy to uh, master once you just get the hang of it. This view right here is the top view where in a uh, 2D sense you'll be seeing all the brushes fr um, in the top of their views. You can, you can also change the views, whatever. I just like to stick with the 4 default that they give me. Um, this right here, uh, front view, obviously you see the front of all the textures. Uh, view mode, left view, you can see the left of all the textures, yada yada yada. These right here I'll cover later, they're not really that important. Marker to the location, it tells you the location that the marker is at, the screen thing right here. You can see it's in the middle of the world. Uh, pretty cool. Marker to camera puts the marker in the location of where the camera is. Pretty useful when you want to make custom sized brushes and stuff. You can also see right here that the world location of the marker has changed. Not dramatically, but at a good rate. Okay. In your um, in your top view, use the O tool to zoom in and out. How about just right here is pretty much um, a, a good view. You, if I, if you haven't you know figured it out already, use the mouse button to go back and forth using a back and forth um, method. We're gonna make a brush using the add primitive option in brush add primitive make a box. It'll ask you to enter the brush fit, uh, thickness at in fi 512. Alright. Now we're gonna stretch it out to make it just pretty much the uh, size of the um, front, I mean top, whatever, tool picture, whatever. Well actually we can make it a little smaller. That doesn't have to be that big. Okay, now that we all have our um, brush in a pr pretty good sized uh, parameter, um, hit Control F to flip your brush. What this will do is turn the brush's textures inside out so they show on the inside but not on the out. As you can see, look, the texture, the default textures on the outside right now, hit Control F, flips them. Now you can see that they show on the inside from the outside. Um, if that makes any sense. 
this will be our shell for our world. What we'll do with this is pretty much just make sure that there are no leaks. Like say you've got like a wall that you accidentally made too small and a part of it is showing. Like you can see the black space. This will cover that leak up um, so that way there are no world errors even if you do make some uh, holes in your world. Right now we're going to make it invisible and to do that go to textures tab hit world textures and select the invisible texture wait a couple of seconds alright now that it's selected hit apply texture and what we've done here hit control uh, not, not just hit U to unselect the brush is we've made the entire brush invisible it shows now but when we compile the map it won't show at all alright now that we have everything now that we have our shell, we're going to go to node, nodes, and create a new container nod, or node, whatever. Um, right click and go to rename. There's also a shortcut for the rename button, which is F2. We'll just hit this because, you know, I've got to show all the no noobs who don't really know yet how to do this. Later on, you can just hit F2 to change the name. We're going to name this shell. You can put it in caps if you want. For some reason, I just enjoy, you know, typing it normal. Put brush zero, which is this brush right here, oh, uh, into the shell box. You can see right here, if we select the container that the brush is in, it selects our shell brush. Okay, moving on, we're going to create a brush inside our shell. We're going to use this, uh, we'll just use the add primitive box method again. Make it at its default size and stretch it out by clicking the anchor buttons. Right now we're making our new brush, which has also got an invisible texture because that's the texture we've got selected. Make it as make it at least one box shorter than the um, or, or smaller, if you will, than the other brushes. Huh? I guess not. No, normally it just textures it with whatever texture you've already used or the latest one that you've used. We're going to texture this. You can now open up your world textures and you can see that the options are a lot more um, flourished or, or whatever. Do we have... Oh, right now um, here, if, if you keep on selecting the outer texture you can just um, select it on the top view, the side in the side views. Alright I like to use just for a global texture concrete 3B just because it looks cool and I enjoy using it for a test world or whatever now here's where these um, selections right here in this toolbar come in useful um, the, you can see the new option has opened up and it is marked a selection we're gonna select this what it does is it makes um, the uh, selection the uh, marker appear right in the middle of whatever we've selected. You can just scroll down a little bit using I and the right click method and go downwards and hit marker to camera. Then right click and go down to oops uh, add object and this will add an object wherever the uh, oops, sorry uh, wherever the uh, marker is we'll add a world properties alright and now while the marker is still selected on world properties go to bind to object what this is going to do is it's going to bind an object to world properties alright now that we've bind, bound a game start point to world properties we can we now have a section of our world that um, we can start from or more uh, just just easier to say it, we've created like the world properties but everything that we're gonna see in our game start point now I'm gonna show you how to process your world and get it to work watch my next tutorial part two on how to make your new world for in using dedit for avp2 Stop.